Hello, world. Frida Riva Dorsey and one Patricia O'Connor here. Frida is taking it easy today, and as she should, she had the first watch on the house while I had to go to the city and do a doctor's appointment. And she was glad to see me come home. And now she is glad to be on the couch and sleep in. And I'm saying, I got you. I'm going to do some things around the house and you just nap. This is a little different today. You can see I've kind of got the door closed for some reason. Why would I have the door closed on such a beautiful day? Well, it's a little breezy out there. And uh, it was also quite noisy. I think we'll be okay now, but they had been doing construction out there by the pool all day today. And so I couldn't go, every time I opened the door, I was hearing big sanders and planers and it sounded like they were just going to town out there. But yeah, it is quite windy today and uh, a little too windy for, for uh, my delicate self to be hanging out here because it's cold. It's about, you know, it's not really cold, cold, but it's about 50 but it's 50 and windy. And um, as if that wasn't so bad, I had pretty much waited. I'd waited because I was planning on shooting this outside. And, and then about 30 minutes ago, I said, well, they're not gonna quit working for a while. So I'll just make a change of plan. And since then they've quit. But um, yeah, that's kind of what we have going on. Uh, I brought in <clears throat> the cork bark oak so that I could remove the wire from um, from those other branches that were facing outwards. But first, I'd like to do a couple of things here. Uh, the other day, when I was doing some of the uh, uh, little bit of prune work that I was going to do on the cypresses, I didn't really mention uh, part of the benefit of this and uh, it was obvious at the time what I was doing was getting rid of uh, things that were growing straight up, things that were growing straight down, or in some places I was getting rid of the multiple branches coming from one site, so that I wouldn't, uh, so that I wouldn't have, uh, you know, uh, overly fat branches, disproportionately fat branches, or uh, taper issues so that with that little bit of cleanup the rest of the idea is, is we're not going to do branch selection right now we're going to let everything that isn't going to uh, hurt us later just continue to grow but uh, what we were doing was getting rid of things that were pointed straight up and we were getting rid of things that were pointed straight down and uh, so and that was for those reasons. But what I didn't point out is how much better the tree looks once you do that. Um, you know that if you were doing uh, a juniper, for instance, that the emphasis is uh, you hear people talking about the flat pads. We're trying to make these pads look flat. And to some extent, if you were to do the work on the pines, people are, are always going to uh, talk about, you know, flat pads and that, that being, but um, that's not really so much something that we think about so much with, with the uh, cypress trees, but it does go without saying that once you cut up everything going straight up and once you cut all the stuff that's going straight down, you do end up with uh, a pretty much flat pad look and uh, even though the idea is is to let is to let the whole tree uh, grow out until fall and then we're going to cut it back to our to uh, we'll make our branch selection choices and until then we're just going to let it uh, recruit all the energy we still get the clip some that that no more than two branches or no more than one or two branches and that no more up and that no more down thing says that we still get to do a little bit of a little bit of work uh, just enough to keep from uh, getting too antsy I'm also going to do another quick look 
at our uh, at our new top. It is look at that. This new leader came from all the way down here, and just in the last couple of weeks, it's come all the way up that much. It is now pretty much to the point where this one started just a couple of weeks ago. These two leaders started right there and this one is almost, is just right up to that point. Um, so that's probably a foot of growth on the leader that we're that we've currently got that's probably a foot of growth but then if you want to look at it that's a foot of a little over a foot of growth on the other side times two so the uh this cypress has already grown um two feet in that it's grown one foot twice um more if you include the third leader coming up from behind in just a little while as promised we'll give this little top snip and that will allow this guy to start taking over and, and out chopping it and then uh, when all of this stuff turns that beautiful rust color in the fall we'll give this uh, which is now a sacrificial base a chop and this will be our this will be our leader from then on I'm really happy about that and I, I've told you all this like every time so um, I'm only repeating that part of it for those that are new, um, but yeah, that's going to be the new leader for that tree. And um, it's just growing really fast. I think uh, I think throwing the fertilizer to them this year was a nice move. You can also see where I put some wire in these guys. And here's the thing with cypress. Uh, you can wire these limbs down and point them down so that we can get that um so that we can get that kind of that pine tree look you know that informal that formal upright where the branches are kind of pointed or going down but as soon as you take the wire off these guys are notorious for springing back up last year uh while watching a video i was watching a guy who talked about a really good trick even after we cut these back and let them viper cape off the tendency is for them to kind of rainbow up and even with the weight bringing them down and what uh what somebody finally pointed out and it seemed to make a lot of good sense to me was instead of constantly trying to wire these guys down was to put a uh let them grow out and and do that thing that they want to do however they want to do it don't fight it so much and then put a cut underneath here and a guy wire and the cut will cause the the branch the, the chop underneath here that's a little bit of a wedge cut about almost all the way through but not quite and then when you bend that back down that seals that that seals that crack which then heals um in a month or so that's all history and then those branches will be uh pointed down at an angle without being rainbowed so that's kind of the way I intend to do things now. However, some of these guys thought that they would go way, way up here. Uh, kind of like what we're allowing this guy to do. This, this was supposed to be a branch, but it's going to be our new leader. But a lot of this other stuff was doing that too. So we don't need it all up here around our head. So that's why I would put a little wire on it now i don't have high hopes for the things that i have put wire on for them to hold um for them to necessarily hold the shape that i have them currently wired to i'm just pulling them down so that they'll act like branches and uh not act like the new leader in town because uh that's not going to happen and so with that that pretty much brings to a conclusion, the part about the bald cypresses. Um, other than that, the wind, you can tell like it's really windy. I'll give a little look-see to the Dawn Redwood. It's back away from, you can kind of see, I'm kind of parked a little bit back from the wall. So that's helping, keeping it from getting wind burned. The uh, Ponderosa 
will not care. I'm hoping this could have issues with wind as the pine next to it and the pine next to it. I'm, I'm going to wait and see. This is the first year that um, we've had the wind issue while we've had the trees pulled back from the rail. But as you can see, the trees out there are moving with the wind and the trees over here aren't unless it's the ponderosa that's hanging off. So uh, we're gonna see whether or not we have any wind issues a little back farther from the rail. And uh, everybody else is pretty happy here and enjoying the breeze for the most part. Our lights are swinging and uh, our treetops are swinging. So this is kind of the part where I thought I would take the show in the house. When I first had this idea to do this, it was like, well, we need to bring the show in the house anyway because it's it's just so it's just so dang noisy out there. But now it's not noisy; it's just cold. So that's got us. All right. So why am I doing that? Well, I just threw the camera at a tripod so that I could uh, play a little bit with uh, both hands and uh, and that's kind of what I'm thinking I'll do. I'm going to try to remove some of this wire in here. Uh, most of this on this side that I'm looking at right now, I don't see it. I don't see it digging in a whole lot, but um, yeah. Ooh. But there are places where it is digging in quite a bit, and to that end, uh, I'm going to have to be go real slow and real careful to uh, try not to tear up anything too much. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And also, uh, what is a big help is. Uh, it's using the uh, pliers for some of this. I'm not at the stage yet where that where that's necessary. But as you can see, I have to get ready for these these branches, these oak branches. You get the feeling that you know it's as solid as oak and all that stuff. But as this wire begins to come off, you get the you get the knowledge, you get the feeling that these branches are. Uh, somewhat fragile so the other hand is definitely definitely necessary to make sure that we keep these guys uh, well supported and um, this part hadn't dug in so much there were other places on the back side oh, on the front side of the tree that I uh, took the wire off a few days ago where uh, you had to be, I had to be careful how I removed it because uh, the branch was about a third of the thickness in the spots where uh, where the uh, wire had dug in. So the feeling was was that that was definitely going to be fragile. Right now, that's kind of. All of that's still kind of working with me, so I, I'll let that unwound that a little long, I guess. Uh, I'm not usually that much for letting that much of an end swing around. I think I'll probably uh, give that a cut with some wire cutters. Do I have wire cutters sitting up here? I do uh, not. Let me grab. That's funny because I thought I did. All right. Okay, fine. So I'm just going to cut that wire back that I'm undoing because I don't want to sling around uh, what's hanging off there. Uh, but for fear of scarring something up. I thought I was, oh, no, they were here. I knew, I knew they were here. They were just hit. Okay. So I had to go look for them somewhere else before I could find them. Yeah, 
okay. So I feel better about that, I like the idea. And I'm also, I don't know how well I'm doing at this, but I'm making an attempt to um, not have my arm dead in the shot. I don't know. I can't see the playback from here without walking around in front of the camera. But uh, we're just going to, we framed this up. I framed this up with a shot that I thought I should be able to get get away with uh, without getting in this getting in this uh, scene too much or standing in front of what I'm trying to work on. Uh, so. Okay, I did okay. I had some wire crossing here. A wire on top of wire. But, uh, it's okay. It's all okay. That's probably, probably covering up with my arm what I'm trying to show you that I'm unwiring. But, uh, there was some other easy, easy parts to unwire and uh, I started thinking about how much we I was going of this I was going to shoot and I thought well I probably won't remove I probably won't remove all of the wire uh, because there's just so much of it on this video so instead of removing the easy part I'll remove the hard part that, you know, I mean, what would be the fun and, and uh, it wouldn't be, it would be boring to watch somebody remove the easy part. Um, so yeah, that was kind of the idea behind that. Uh, uh, uh. And where is that? I'm looking for the end of a wire in all the wrong places. And. And I had a bug. It didn't, um, it didn't strike me as a, a, a leaf hopper. So, uh, that would have been that would have been important. Had it been a leaf hopper, I probably would have draped my arm across the tree and put it back on the tree. But as it was, we evicted the bug. Yeah, bug eviction. Okay, so, cheap hat. But, uh, main thing here is pay attention to what you're grabbing. Don't grab an oak branch, a tiny uh, oak branch, thinking it is a, a piece of wire and go yank it on it. We could probably do some real damage that way. And yay! There we go. You can see you can probably see uh, some dig in in there. All right, now let me see if I'm gonna take this over a little and up a little more to that. And, uh, okay. And I can't say enough about feeling the need to um, support all this stuff as we get this guys, as we get this guys out here. Today I was watching uh, some YouTube videos out of Florida, the uh, Weigert's Nursery again, and it was some two-year-old videos, I believe. 
where they were doing the uh, uh, valley oak, whatever, the oak that they have, the indigenous oak that they have uh, in Florida. And uh, he was showing the different oaks that they had and uh, how they were doing and how they sold them. And he was given some, uh, he was given some, he gives really good, if you watch his videos, uh, you can probably watch them. He's probably, I think there's some on some crepe myrtles and I believe there's some uh, about some ficus, some, some nice ficus trees they have there. And of course I would started watching them over uh, over their cypress trees. I can't tell which way this wire goes. Why don't I bring the stand down, Patricia? Okay, let's see how this goes. Yeah, it went down a little just by taking the tension off of it. Please don't drop, please don't drop, please don't drop. Okay, that works. This is a good table. I'm always a little cautious about using one of these. I haven't been playing with bonsai tables for a long time. And this oak has quite a bit of weight on there. I would worry about misusing the table. There, it needed to pop off. It was dug in. I was like, I can't figure out which way to turn this wire to get it to come off. And it was just dug in. It was already gone. Don't cry for me, I'm already gone. All right, I could take that back up or I could point the camera. Let's do both. We'll do a little of both, I suppose. So that's got that. And that's got those guys. I could take this down to where I'm not just, I can show you the tree, yeah. So you can see we're about to come out with the second flush of leaves. I've got some some yellow yellowing leaves here. They're about to, but then we've got this salmon colored thing. These little shoots just jetting out all over the place from uh, my little cutback two weeks ago. So this is what is what's left of our of our wire and. Uh, We'll take it down to this guy next. Let me see what it is. Are you? Yeah, I could point that down or I could bring the camera. No, I'll take that down a little bit more. Okay. All right, so. Yeah, there was quite a bit of dig in on, on this branch already. Uh, let's cut that. I'm going to clip this back rather than sling. You know, if, if I wanted to leave the wire intact, I, it would be something that I could reuse later, but I'm not. Um, I'm not the big fan of... I'll grab a piece of... Every once in a while, I'll grab a piece of used wire and just do a... a you know, if you need a little piece for something here or there. But for the most part... I'm not one of those that keeps uh, a stash of old wire. Um, yeah, anyway, I haven't started thinking that way. Uh, I might ought to start thinking about um, my hardware store connection and... Uh, Seeing what can be had because uh, I wouldn't be afraid to uh, anneal it. Is that the right? Is that the right uh, spin on the word? Where I would take it and you heat it up really, really hot to where it loses its shine and kind of gets a flat, flat copper color, and that's when it's workable. That's what you see. Everybody who. Uh, I've seen guys, old guys, do it on stoves. So put it on an electric stove and go grab it with tongs. Now, there's a problem with that. That would, uh, you see people doing that, they could be doing that inside their homes. And if you are 
uh, getting copper that hot in your home, you are breathing uh, arsenic, among other things. So, uh, I could see going out into a, I could see going out into a, a, a parking lot or something with a, a can of Coleman uh, fuel and a little, and a little propane heater nozzle and, uh, or, you know, torch nozzle and just making it absolutely cherry red, a whole coil of copper though, that would, that would probably be something that uh, you could get away with without, without breathing it, you know, but that's something that you would, I wouldn't do it in a, I wouldn't do it in a closed environment. I'll make sure I have plenty of ventilation. They, uh, yeah, can't say that enough. Arsenic, don't want that. So, this is not some earth shattering stuff, but uh, bringing this, pulling this wire off is uh, got to be careful about how you do it. I don't want to break anything. Um, and these branches, they do feel when they have the wire, the wire on them, they feel really, really strong. But as soon as that stuff starts coming off, you get a sensation of just how fragile a lot of this stuff is. And uh, I wasn't so worried about covering wire over wire when I did this. It's kind of a hack thing to do. And I, I was like, well, we're wiring for effect and we're getting, and uh, we're getting the effect we want out of the wire. I'm not worried about it. Um, it makes it, it makes it more difficult to remove so far that it hasn't caused me any problems, but, um, it does make it harder to get off when it's, when you got to stop on like, wrapping something and start at the other end of the wire that you wired on top of it. Cause you're not going to get any farther. I can see where that could get a little spastic. Sometimes. So if you see what I'm doing, I was, just going to continue to unwrap this. But at this point, the dig in is so thick that the last little inch or two of this really, really, really is gonna need some support or, uh, or I run the risk of breaking off that tip that, uh, that I was so happy that we were able to grow. I've got some like perfect little viprication going on there and I have to worry about uh, something bad happening, something clumsy happening because it dug in so much. But we got away. We got away with that. Look, I don't even think I tore up any leaves. So, yeah, all right. We'll just keep moving. That's got this one. And I just really piled it to this one. But, um, it's okay. It's all right. Um, sometimes when you're wiring, it's, uh, it's, well, it's more important that it does what you want it to do. I mean, that's always more important than whether or not, um, you did a showcase stellar wire job. There's some pretty wire that I didn't do in, I didn't do in, uh, anything. And um, you also see, uh, I also see some of my counterparts apologizing for the untidiness of, uh, of some wire that's doing exactly what they wanted it to do. And then it, but the thing was, it wasn't, it wasn't uh, show quality wiring, but then it wasn't in a show situation. I guess it's kind of like walking out at the end of your driveway in the bathrobe, you know? It's like you're still kind of in your own domain, but then people see you and you feel like you need to um, go, well, yeah, kind of. 
I tend not to make excuses for being seen in my bathrobe. I see it as a sign that uh, I'm living right. Pat's in her bathrobe at four o'clock? Yeah, because she can be. Oh, yeah. Okay, that would be a good time to show uh, how handy pliers are. Also, in the last year, I've gotten to wear uh, ply wire more with pliers than I have in the past. When those guys get really small, it's a lot easier. You see, that's just, that's unfortunate. I had all that stuff in this big old huge mess like that. There was no sense in that path. Uh, I've gotten to the point to where I am using my pliers more when I um, apply wire, apply the wire. And uh, there is a certain, a certain beauty to that. I mean, you get your hands in these little cramped type positions and you try to do stuff. And the secret is just grab it with just grab it with the pliers and that just ends up being once you start get you know it doesn't take hardly any time to get the hang of doing that and once you do you just kind of see where um, that goes that can go a lot easier where are you at there you are okay One. I haven't been to the city in a while, but today I went to San Francisco and checked in with my doctors. I, um, it's spring and when we get into summer, I've got to go and have a little, and have a little, uh, work done myself kind of like i'm a, i'm a bonsai also i'm a bit of a bonsai tree and into myself so come i think it's july uh i've got to go in for a surgery this was a surgery that was scheduled a couple of years ago i don't it's not life-threatening it will be a it'll be a pain in the butt as far as surgeries go but i don't think these are generally regarded as, as high risk. Although, uh, I don't know why, even as a kid who raced motorcycles, I was always leery of anesthesia. Just like, for some reason, when I would just look at doctors and go, mom's listening, I don't have to worry about it. For some reason, I always just had this funny feeling about anesthesia. Like, I don't know, I worry that you don't wake up. I think as long as I know what's going on, I've got a will, you know, but I feel like for some reason, if you're on anesthesia, you might not. Your will to keep going could be uh, asleep. Ooh, I almost, do you see that? Really have to watch how you're grabbing. That needed a lot of support for me to grab that that way. No harm, no foul. Totally got away with it. Uh, yeah, so I'm just gonna hold that whole thing and try to keep it. This whole little end of this branch would like to turn as I unwind that wire. And so I had to be really careful. Also refreshing to see that um, this stuff is still holding the shape that I had originally put into it which was the point in letting it go long enough to be tricky was I uh, was a little over putting wire on branches and then just have them straighten back out so yeah uh, I was also noticing noticing that uh, sometimes uh, you put wire on a branch and then uh, as your branch grows, it become it overpowers the wire. So you either take that off and replace it with a heavier one, more damage, more damage, or or you do what I did last time and just uh, 
take the same size wire again and throw another wire on top of it. And that's kind of why I had, uh, that's why I had wires over, over other wires. And um, so we were able to make that work though. We were able to get what we wanted done. We got some motion in these guys. We got, uh, we were able to keep keep the, uh, the motion that we put in these guys and um, by doubling up that wire and sometimes tripling up that wire, we uh, didn't have to unwire and rewire things, which for me would have probably caused me to tear up more stuff. So far, so good. Uh, yeah, so far, so good. This is our Tuesday, our Tuesday drop. And, uh, ooh, ooh, ooh. Tomorrow is supposed to be absolutely beautiful. And then on our Thursday drop, it is supposed to be windy and rainy. So, uh, Then they also call for um, another pretty good chance of rain before our Saturday drop or on our Saturday drop. To that, I say we're just going to wait and see what we're just going to wait and see what's going on there. Um, a lot of that stuff, a lot of that stuff, especially here, it tends to change before we get there. So if they're saying it's gonna, if, if they're saying it's going to rain tomorrow, then act accordingly, or if it's gonna be really windy tomorrow, act accordingly. If they say later on in the week, expect, I uh, expect to check the weather again later on in the week and see if they still mean it. That's kind of how that goes. But um, they said it was going to be windy today, and uh, it absolutely, absolutely is quite windy. I'm trying to see which way I need to bend that to stay, to keep everybody out of trouble. It's like I'm trying to get a wire off here, and I can't. Oh, yeah, okay, we were okay. Uh... A wire stuff and then it grows which is good but then that makes it a little difficult for me to see which way to go with the wire why don't we just cut that yeah 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 good idea Pat just cut that and make sure you're cutting the dang wire okay yeah okay let's go this to veil Also, I um, wired some of these branches out to the end and then, and then clipped the end at some point. So when they, when they get dug in at that point, you're trying to remove something from the end of a branch and um, watch out for buds that might be there. You might have the... Uh, muchly needed buds right there on the end of the branch but you've also got a freshly sharpened uh, wire end right there so when you pull that off be careful that you don't take out any little buds that could be hiding in there i mean that's that's almost always those are the holy grail of buds you know right there where you want them so be sure and not uh be sure and pay attention to what you could be tearing up when you're trying to lift that edge of the wire off the end of a branch, especially when you uh, cut the end of the branch that had a wire on it and you just cut through wire and branch because that's the that's the new end. Okay, that's all. That's not a bad practice. But when it comes time to remove that, make sure you're not 
dug into anything when you lift that end up there. Okay, I'm gonna cut that rather than drag, rather than drag all of that around all those little shoots. I've already got a little pile of wire here. Uh, maybe if, yeah, okay, I think when I'm, when I get done with this, I'll, I'll pull the camera in tight and show, uh, and show some of our little wire issues. So you yourself at home can look at, uh, you know, some of you may have been watching these videos and watched me when I made a decision to, um, to let this part go so that I wouldn't have to worry about it. Well, um, now I'm seeing the outcome of that. And personally, I'm okay with it. But, uh, yeah. It wouldn't be right, I don't think, for me just to go, and everything ha ended happily ever after. Uh, like right now, that little issue I was discussing earlier, I'm trying to dig, I'm trying to dig the end of this wire out of this cut branch without doing damage to the end of the branch. And I'm not sure how much luck I'm having. Why don't you cut it? The beauty of these is that you can pull right up next. You can pull right up next to your, well, well you use your finger now. You can pull right up next to your branch and remove a wire. Um, like I'm about to do here. Yes, yes. Now, where do I grab it to support that tiny little thing? Get it. Let's take that down. Let's take that there. <clears throat> yeah, that was that tough to lift up that one edge of that wire. So far, I don't feel like I've, uh, if I were manhandling the, um, the Dawn Redwood this much, those little fronds would start hanging down and looking a little, looking a little battered, which is a good time to, uh, maybe give it a rest. But the oak is okay. Where's the end? Where's the end? So... And then uncoil it from the leaves so that we don't tear up any little leaves. And then unwrap that guy. So yeah, uh, it's not boring. We could uh, we could have some disaster at any moment. And uh, I thought that would be more interesting than. Um, Saying, yeah, sometime today I'm going to hit my nerve up and remove this wire from here. And then I'll tell you how it went. Ooh. That's Star Trek music. That's whenever, whenever anything happened with Kurt. That was the playing in the background. Fighting with Spock over some mating ritual or trying to get a sweatshirt on that was two sizes too small. You would always hear that music in the background. Once it gets stuck in your head, you kind of need a, a frontal lobotomy or something to get that out of there. 
The neat thing about oaks is that you can like be handsy, you know? It's kind of, it's kind of the oak thing. They've got some, they've got a little bit of heft to them. I'm looking, looking for wire. I'm looking to see the wire I missed. There it is. There's that one. That's what's left. Uh, okay. So here we go. We're just going to dive right in to this one. As soon as I find the end. Oh, that, was, that wasn't too bad. Man, uh, this branch is absolutely chocked full uh, buds. I mean, they're just all over it. really want to try to get out of here as clean as possible because there is uh this branch looks to me like it is about to erupt also it got put off until now because it was so dug in i cut both ends of it and didn't see it in there I had removed the rest of this branch earlier, I think. I think that was just buried in there and I didn't see it. All right, that is, that is that. This is that. That is this. This is they. Those are them. All that stuff. I'm going to pull out of the tripod, see if I can get my fingers in here and uh, put them in the lens, you know, how I do. Um, Give this a little look here. See how we're, see how we're doing. Got all of that off. And I know I should be like four feet away if I were going to do a proper.